Um, hi, sir. Okay, uh, so. Um, uh, Can you call me Rahul instead of sir? Okay. Makes me makes me more comfortable. Um, I'm really nervous. Okay. Hi, Rahul. Um, what is that special quality that you imbibe from your mother? Humility. That that. No matter how powerful a person is, no matter how weak a person is, regardless of who the person is, they always have a opinion, they always have a unique way of looking at the world and one must respect that opinion and try to understand where that person is coming from. I'm looking for of what he's going to speak tomorrow about what is going to change in the future in our educational system. And we feel that India needs to spend much more money on education. So we are going to increase the amount of money that we spend on education and our target is 6%. What I want to know from him is what he would do for women empowerment in our country. The way Indian women are treated leaves a lot to be desired. Frankly, I don't see enough women in leadership positions. I don't see them leading enough companies, I don't see them leading enough state. One of the things that we've decided in 2019 we're going to pass the women's reservation bill in Lok Sabha, Vidhan Sabhas. Also going to reserve 33% of all government jobs at the national level for women. Did you like demonetization? No sir. Do you think it was a good economic decision? No. So I think it's pretty clear the damage demonetization did. It's a pity that the Prime Minister didn't come and take your advice before he did demonetization because, because he would have got the right answer. You can't have a negative, fearful atmosphere in the country. You can't have an atmosphere of discrimination in the country and then expect economic growth. So the first thing we would do is we would change the mood of the country. We would move the country to a place where people feel empowered, happy and to a place where people relate with each other in a pleasant, loving way. What according to you is the biggest hindrance to growth in India? The fact that, the fact that huge amount of resources are captured by 15 or 20 people and the mechanism of capture is corruption. So I would say that corruption and crony capitalism are a huge barrier to growth in India. The Prime Minister of the country himself has his name in government documents which are saying that he is directly responsible for negotiating parallelly with the Dassault company on Rafael. The President of France says, the Prime Minister of India has told me personally himself in a meeting that Mr. Anil Ambani should get the Rafael contract. Everybody knows that the Prime Minister has stolen 30,000 crores and given them to Mr. Ambani. The whole country knows it. But why is, no, why is there no investigation? Investigate everybody. Investigate Mr. Vadra. I'm the first person to say it. Right? But, but, investigate the Prime Minister. Do you think only fighting is going to be the resolution? I mean, uh, when Pakistan did, we did it back. I mean, this is not going to be an end if it's going to be just a war. When we came to power in 2004, Jammu Kashmir was on fire. And we decided to fight terrorism strategically. So we did a number of things. Number one, we isolated Pakistan diplomatically. We engaged with the population of Jammu and Kashmir. So we sent businesses into Jammu and Kashmir. I myself went with the top Indian business leaders to Jammu and Kashmir, spoke to young students like you and said, listen, let us try and build a bridge. Let us try and build businesses uh, in Jammu and Kashmir and with Jammu and Kashmir youngsters in the rest of the country. So we had elections in the villages and in the small towns of Jammu and Kashmir and we decentralized power to the people of Jammu and Kashmir. 
Between 2004 and 2012, we finished terrorism. There was no terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, why did you hug Modi, sir? Love is the foundation of every religion. The truth is that the Prime Minister, unfortunately, for whatever reason, did not have the type of love that he should have had. And that is why he generates this anger. So, I genuinely feel love for the Prime Minister. The session was truly amazing and inspiring. Yeah, it was actually good. Man. I'm uh, it, Everything that he made, uh, he said made sense to us. We could relate, we could understand. There's currently a ideological battle going on in India. And it is very sharply divided between two ideologies. One ideology is a unifying ideology which says that all people of this country should live together happily and this country should not be dominated by any one idea and on the other side you have an ideology which is represented by the current government and the prime minister where they believe that one idea should be imposed on our country they have a very particular view about the role of women in our society uh, and they feel that different languages different cultures are inferior to one centralizing culture and one idea. The first time that we are going to vote now. So being this as the basic foundation, uh, we know that we can choose the right person now. How many times have you seen the Prime Minister of India standing in the middle of 3,000 women like this? How many times have you seen the Prime Minister of India standing here like this, being open to any question from anybody? As women, you have every right to the space that you deserve. You will find in life that people will tell you, you're a woman, you can't run this company. Or you're a woman, you can't do this or you can't do that. Don't accept it. You, you have to believe in yourselves. You have to be humble. And when someone throws hate at you, catch the hate, put it down and throw love in return. Thank you very much. Thank you.